Hey, welcome to the second part of the AWS Cloud Resume Challenge series that I'm doing. So in the last video, I mentioned that how you can use HTML template for your resume website that we'll be building. And I hope you were able to find a template that worked for you and were able to edit the HTML components of it and also CSS components of it to make it look the way you want. So after we have done those changes in the HTML file, what I would love to do now is to deploy it to S3, which brings us to the Cloud Resume Challenge, as that is the part in our second, third, and fourth step here. Also, we'll be setting up CloudFront, which would be the fifth step. So let me show you what I have. So this is my website, right? So I have an index.html, some CSS, and I can show you by running it locally how it looks. This is my static website that I built for my resume. So you can see Rishwip Kumar, I'm cloud architect, cloud engineer, or DevOps engineer. Right now we'll deploy this to S3, which means we'll have to log in into our AWS console. And if we go ahead and type in S3, it'll bring us to this dashboard where we can see all our previous buckets if you have created any. What I'll do is click on create bucket and we'll name this bucket cloud resume challenge. I think is an appropriate name. And I'll leave the AWS region to be CS Central 1 since I am in Canada. For the object ownership, we'll leave ACLs disabled. We'll also block all public access so the, the bucket itself is not accessible publicly. For bucket versioning tool, we'll leave it disabled. And for tags, I'll add a tag saying project because I've been using a similar tags for other projects and we'll name this as cloud resume challenge. For the encryption, we can leave it to default and we'll click on create bucket. So the bucket with same name already exists. What I can do is Risha Cloud Resume Challenge and see if that is not taken. So with S3 bucket names, you have to remember that they need to be globally unique. And it just says, says that here too. We can try that again. Click on create bucket and it should create a bucket. So Risha dash cloud dash resume dash challenge was available. So after we have created the bucket, what I'll do is I'll click on the bucket and you see how you can upload objects here. So let's upload our website folder here. So in total, we have 16 files. And if I click on upload, uh, it'll start uploading those files and we can see the progress on the top. And there we go. Our files are uploaded to the S3 bucket. So now what we have to do is to go into our S3 bucket and make sure we enable a setting so that we are able to use it as our static website hosting service. So what I'll do is I'll go into Reshop Cloud Resume Challenge bucket. And if I click on properties, if you scroll down to the bottom, you'll see that there is a static website hosting option. And if you click on edit, we should be able to enable it. So let's click on enable and hosting type is host a static website because that's what we want. The index document is index.html in our case, and we don't have any redirection rules. So we'll click on save changes. And if I go to objects, and if I try to access the index.html file, we now get an object URL, which we can access. What you'll see is not the website, but a permission error. Since remember, we didn't make our bucket public. So it is not able to access our index.html. Hence, we get an error message saying access denied. And there is a way we can access this using CloudFront. So we won't have to make our bucket public, but we can still access our index.html. So let's move on to that. So coming back to our AWS console, we'll go into our search bar here and type in CloudFront. So CloudFront is an AWS service that helps in delivering data at low latency and high transfer speed. So basically it's a CDN service, Right. So if I zoom in, we'll click on create distribution. So now we can pick an origin domain name. For us, it was the reshub-cloud-resume-challenge-s3-amazon-aws. So you will see your S3 buckets name here. So we'll click that. 
So we'll add an origin access control setting, which basically gives our CloudFront distribution access to our S3 bucket to read objects. Because remember, our bucket is not public, so nothing has access right now to our bucket rather than us using the UI. But we'll allow the CloudFront distribution to use this origin access control setting to allow access to the bucket contents. So what it says is you must allow access to CloudFront using this policy statement. So you can copy the policy here, right? And if I go to my bucket and click on permissions, what I want to do is on the bucket policy, click on edit, and you can paste the policy that you just got from the CloudFront by clicking on copy here. And then you can click on save changes. So this has updated your bucket policy to whatever CloudFront generated. And for the rest of the settings, we'll leave it default. Only we will change this. So we'll uh, allow only HTTPS access so that it uses the secure protocol over the HTTP. And everything else, we can leave it to default and click Create Distribution. Now, it'll take some time to deploy this distribution. And I'll see you once it is deployed. A few moments later. So the CloudFront distribution is deployed, as you can see. The one thing that I did want to mention is, as I was researching, because the last time I did this challenge, there was only access identities, so region access identities, but now we also see region access control settings. And one thing that has changed is you don't need to enable static website hosting. So I have disabled that. Um, so you don't need to enable static website hosting on your S3 bucket. But what I also forgot to mention is make sure you have a default root object so you can edit the CloudFront distribution and make sure the default root object is your index.html. It just tells and when you try to access this URL, what is the default root object that it should load up. In our case, it's our resume that sits in index.html. So if I copy the URL now and paste it, it should load my resume website, as you can see. So we have got our S3 bucket working with public access blocked, and we are accessing this website using CloudFront. So we have covered both the fourth, fifth part of this challenge. What I want to do now is have a custom URL for our website. As you can see right now, it just says cloudfront.net with some random number at the front. So what we'll do is we'll go into the CloudFront distribution again, and then you see alternate domain names in the settings is set to none. What I have done is, and I'll link down the documentation, but if I go to Route 53 in my console, I can show you the domain that I have that I want to work with. So Route 53, and then I have two domains that we can work with. So one is reshop.cloud, and that's what we'll pick for today. So if you don't have a domain name, I would highly suggest buying one. And the services that I've used before for buying domains is both Route 53 and Namecheap. The normal ones are usually around $12 a year. So I have deleted my resume.reshop.cloud record because it already existed. And that is the domain I want to use here. So what I'll do is we'll click on the edit and then under alternate domain name, where it says C name, we'll add resume.reshub.cloud. We don't have an ACM certificate for reshub.cloud. So what we'll do is we'll click on request certificate. And we'll say request a public certificate. Click next for the domain names. And what I'll do is add a wildcard so I can use this for other domains too. So star.reshub.cloud, and we'll go with DNS validation. We'll leave everything else to default, and we'll add our famous tag for project. The value would be cloud resume challenge. And there we go. We'll click on request, and we'll wait for reshub.cloud. As you can see, the status is pending validation, and once it's issued, we can use that with our CloudFront distribution here. So as you can see, the star.reshop.cloud ACM has issued an SSL certificate, which now we can come to CloudFront distribution and click on the drop down and hit this little refresh icon. 
and now you should be able to see star.reshape.cloud. Star basically is just a wildcard which allows us to use this SSL certificate with resume.reshape.cloud. We'll leave the TLS settings to be the default, which is the recommended. We'll click on save changes. And you'll see that after CloudFront has done deploying the distribution, we should be able to view our resume on resume.reshub.cloud over HTTPS. So it is done deploying as we can see here um, in the distributions. And when I check the records in Route 53, it didn't automatically add resume.reshub.cloud to point towards the CloudFront distribution. So we will create that manually now. So we'll click on create record. Right, so I was in my hosted zone for reshape.cloud and then I just clicked create record. And then what the subdomain is resume.reshape.cloud. So the record type will be A since we will be pointing towards AWS resource. As you can see, it says routes traffic to an IPv4 address and some AWS resources. And the resource we have is the CloudFront distribution. So we'll check this alias check mark here. And then for the endpoint, we will pick CloudFront distribution. And then it'll say choose your distribution. So you'll see resume.reshape.cloud will populate itself here. And then we'll leave the routing policy to be simple. And then we'll click on create record. So now you'll see resume.reshape.cloud record has been created here. Now we can try visiting this URL to see if our site loads. So it'll take some time to DNS to propagate. So we'll, we'll wait for that. So we can look at the DNS propagation by looking at the status here. So if I click on refresh, you can see the status is pending. Okay, so the DNS propagation happened and you can see the page finally loaded. You can see the custom URL on the top. It says HTTPS resume.reshift.cloud which means our SSL certificate is also working. So we can view the certificate by clicking on the lock icon right next to HTTPS. Also, our website is functioning as it should. This was the demo for today. We covered a few different things, made an S3 bucket, uploaded our website files to that bucket, we made a CloudFront distribution, and we also enabled custom domain over HTTPS using ACM, which is AWS Certificate Manager. That was the second part of the AWS Cloud Resume Challenge. Next, we'll be starting to look at the Lambda functions, the JavaScript, and the databases uh, where we will be using DynamoDB to store the viewer count. That will be in the next part. Make sure you have subscribed and turned on the notifications so that you're notified when the next part is uploaded on my channel. If you haven't checked out, check out the first part of the AWS Cloud Resume Challenge, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.